All right, so welcome back. If you're new to the channel, this is my journey to learning how to swing trade. So I'm not completely new to the stock market. I did do a little bit of trading like five, six years ago, but because of a change at my job, I couldn't day trade anymore. So now I wanna to try to get back into it, learning a swing trading strategy. So week one is officially in the books. I'm using Webull and their paper trading program. So I plan to do that for like a month or two or until I get comfortable enough to use real money. Swing trading holding overnight is something that I've never really done before. So that will all be new to me. So the little bit of trading experience that I do have, I know that risk management is something that I really wanna focus on. My first year trading, I ended up red on the year, which I think is pretty normal, but I actually analyzed all the trades and four specific trades were the reason I was negative on the year. So I ended up letting four different trades go against me like 35% and I was going in with really big size and basically just kind of holding and hoping and that's something that I really want to get away from. So focusing on good risk management is really going to be a priority for me. So big things are going to be stop losses, respecting my stop losses and appropriate sizing. So I have some good examples of that from this week. Some things I did well, some things I did not do well. So let's get into the trades. So first thing I did before I started trading anything was make this log so I can log all the trades. So I have long trades, short trades, and I have entry, exit, days holding, the ticker symbol, entry and exit prices, and then I'm also gonna have stop loss and profit targets because I wanna develop setting good profit taking habits and stop loss habits. So I feel like a start to that is gonna be tracking that stuff going into it with a plan and respecting the plan. Position size, the type and pattern. So basically my reason for getting into the trade or what I saw while I was looking at it. And then just some additional notes. So as you can see, I lost on pretty much all of my long trades and I was 100% on all of my short trades. So the little bit of experience that I do have, I was focusing primarily on short selling. And you can see that in my first week that I'm a lot better at the short side than I am on the long side. So good thing I'm paper trading and learning that skill. So the first trade that I did, I was just kind of playing around testing the mobile app, looking through some charts, and I ended up seeing this pattern. So this was NAKD, it was a short, and I ended up seeing this descending triangle pattern. So horizontal support here and then descending resistance line. So I ended up just taking this short at 182 and then covering it at 160 and that ended up being a $220 gain because I had a thousand shares. So again, I'm gonna be focusing on trying to swing trade, not intraday scalping like this. Yeah, this was a good trade, but I don't wanna do this because I had a lot of size, a thousand shares, and this easily could have went against me really quick and lost $200. And on a $3,000 account, that's a big, big loss. So even though that one worked out for me, I wanted to go after like a bigger name stock that wasn't gonna have so much volatility and possibly be a slow mover for a long hold. So I ended up going after Apple and it's just because it's a big name, probably gonna be a slow mover and not gonna jump around a whole lot. So what I ended up seeing here was this long-term uptrend. And my idea going into this trade was trading in the direction of the overall trend. So this is an uptrend for three months and I wanted to take a long position once it broke out of this symmetrical triangle pattern. So you can see here, it did actually break out to the upside of this symmetrical triangle. So I felt like a long entry was a good thing. And I entered the trade right at the break and let it go. And it continued to break out for about an hour and a half. And that's what you see right here. So next morning, you can see the date there going from the 12th to the 16th. Monday morning, it ended up opening a little bit higher, ran up, and then it ended up dropping lower and then dropping back into the pattern. So this was a breakout fail and rejection. So I tried to break out higher and it failed to break out and hold that higher level. So I ended up holding it a little bit longer to see what it was gonna do. And then I watched it throughout the day and I could see towards the end of the day, it was actually gonna close at the lows of the day. So now we look at this pattern on the daily chart, you could see it broke out to the upside of the pattern and then it ended up breaking back in, rejecting the upside breakout, and then closing at the lows of the day and breaking that uptrend. So you can see here that it was holding this uptrend. It doesn't have any candles that closed on the bottom side of that uptrend for about three months. And here I could see that it was going to close on weakness, breaking that trend. So I took the long trade off and then I flipped short at 133.15. And then you could see that it ended up gapping down the next morning to about $131. It was in the 130 range the whole next day. So that was a pretty good move, which overall I was happy with that. I saw that the breakout was failing. I managed the risk really well. I didn't hold it too long. Then you can see I cut it off for about a $25 loss. So I feel like the size was appropriate. The loss was managed well. 
the loss was less than 1% of the total account, which is I think what I'm going to be using for managing the risk on each trade, that 1% of the total account value would be like the, the max loss, or that should be like where I want to start getting out. So overall, I wasn't too disappointed with that one. I saw what was happening, took it off for a manageable loss, and then flipped short when I reevaluated it and saw that it was actually a short. So you can see here the Apple short position. I ended up taking it off at 126.60. So I had a take profit order in there at 127.50 and I left it good till canceled and including after hours. So what ended up happening that day is there was one tick that was down to 126.60 and it actually took it off after hours. So I thought maybe it was a glitch on the system. I did verify it on Yahoo Finance that it was actually one tick and the low was 126.60. So technically it would have been a valid trade. It did show it on other platforms. It took the trade off and exited the position. So I don't feel like that's a very common situation to rely on. So I don't really consider it strategy. That would have been just kind of a luck thing that happened. So next trade was CCNC and this was an ascending triangle and kind of didn't really have a good plan going into this one. You can see that I don't have a stop loss or profit target. So I didn't really plan this one beforehand. I just saw that it was an ascending triangle and I wanted to take this trade. So what I ended up doing in this one was taking on too much size. So I had 251 shares. So it ended up hitting my risk level of the $30 on a 12 cent move. So I didn't really plan it out well enough to give the price enough room before I hit my risk level. I ended up stopping out early and then the next morning, even the end of the day, it ended up gaining $1.50. I just had too much size and what I was doing was trading the PL. So I wasn't trading the chart. I wasn't trading the pattern. It was basically just watching that profit and loss number and seeing that it was at my risk level and I got out of the trade for no reason. So if I was sized appropriately at maybe 75 or 100 shares, I would have been able to give this thing 30 to 45 cents to move around and let the pattern work. So it ended up breaking out on the last 15 minute candle of the day and end of the day it ended up going up to about $7 a share. So that would have been a 60 cent gain and then it gapped up the next morning and ran to $9 a share. One good thing is I did stop out at a reasonable point. So what I need to work on though is sizing appropriately so I can give the price action enough room to move where I don't end up stopping out for no reason. So next I went into GOEV and this was another one that I bought looking for it to go up and ended up flipping short when I saw the pattern was breaking down. So if we look at this whole pattern here, it's another symmetrical triangle pattern and what I was looking for, and I even wrote down my plan on here, so I didn't follow my plan again very accurately on this. There was a reason for that and I can explain it. So what I wrote on my plan was consolidation after earnings breakout and this is a really, really big range. So I was looking for a big move once it broke out of this range. So assuming it was an earnings breakout, it's positive news, it's an electric vehicle company, and I was looking for it to break higher. So my original plan was I wanted to see it pull back to 16 for an entry, but while I was watching it, I ended up seeing that it was respecting and holding the 1650 level, and it had already bounced off of the lower support line slightly before that. So I was thinking that it was gonna hold 1650 and then move higher, and it wasn't gonna pull back to 16. So what ended up happening the next day, it broke through the 1650 level and pulled back to 16 after I already had entries at 1660 and 1670. So basically didn't follow my original plan and ended up getting like a chase entry or a really bad entry on it. It did pull back to 16, which was part of the original plan. And I held it because I felt like the plan, original plan was still working. But now that put me in a bad spot because my stop loss was 1550. So now I'm looking at taking about a dollar loss on it just to exit the position because I had a bad entry. So you can see my entry average was 1636 and my exit average was 1585. So I took it off before the 1550 stop loss, but my loss ended up being double the size because I ended up adding size when I shouldn't have. So I saw it kind of hovering around that 16 level and I even said to myself like I should go down to half size just in case this thing breaks below and I had a crappy entry just in case it breaks lower I should minimize the loss and cut it down to half size if it holds you can always add the size back on but what I did instead was I doubled the size so 
doubled the size shortly after that and it ended up breaking down and then I just cut the thing off or double the loss instead of a quarter of what the loss could have been. So either way, I still recognize that the pattern was breaking down. I wasn't going to hold it longer because I could see that it wasn't going my way. It was a $60 loss, which is about 2% of the account value. Still a manageable loss, but definitely some bad habits. So now, similar to Apple, it's making the symmetrical wedge pattern and I saw a close of the day outside of the pattern. So that was the reason for flipping short. It wasn't just a blind flip short because going long isn't winning. There was a reason for it. So you can see here, it did end up breaking out of the pattern, gap down out of the pattern, and ended up closing and holding that day outside of this symmetrical triangle pattern. So now I'll explain some of my logic here on this GOEV trade. So it ended up pulling back and it tested the support line and was holding within the pattern. So it had two bounces basically off support, it came up and then it was starting to hold this 1650 area. So once I noticed that it started to hold 1650, I thought it already bounced twice, so it's going to hold 1650 and then possibly go higher. So I added at 1660 and then I added another one at like 1670, thinking that it was going to finally start to make a move higher. Here you can see the 1650 line snap and it was a big move down, which should have been a red flag for me that this thing is weak and it's starting to break down but because it was still the perfect pullback to 16 that I was originally looking for I held it. It ended up bouncing off and recovering so it looked like it was doing well and then next morning it ended up gapping down. And that's where I took it off for a loss and then flipped short. So this GOEV trade my average is 15,693 and I had an initial exit of 1540 so what I ended up doing on this trade was seeing it break down. Now I basically confirmed that it wants to go lower because it broke out of the pattern. So I felt like it was a good short. It was respecting that 16 level for two days. I shorted anticipating that it was going to pull back to 16 and then go lower after that. I had like a 1560 short and then a 1580 short. with the, So the average was about 1569. So there I was starting to get myself into a situation where I felt like I had too much size. I was pretty confident it was going to go lower as, it, as long as it didn't break and hold above that 16 level. So what I did was I let it fade until the end of the day Friday and then I took off two-thirds size and now I'm going to let the one-third size ride for however long it needs to. So that's why I have it written down right here, holding one-third size. So this was the profit that I took on it, $35 for the two-thirds. And this one-third size, I'm just going to sit and let it ride until it breaks the 50 EMA. So one of the things I started doing towards the end of the week, which I think will be a big help on the following weeks, was I added the 50 period exponential moving average to the target, so the 50 EMA. So if I go back and I review the trades from the week, the Apple trade, I wouldn't have taken it long with this indicator on, and the GOEV trade, I also wouldn't have taken it long with the 50 EMA on it. So let me explain that. So now if I add the 50 EMA onto the chart, you can see that it's overall, it's in a downtrend. And it's actually making a lower high if you look at this here. The high is 1692 and the high of this 50 EMA is 1691. So it's making a slightly lower high and it's also in a downtrend at the point when I entered the trade here. So definitely not a foolproof method, but I feel like it's a way to help judge the direction of the trend before entering a trade. So next week I'm going to try that. See how that goes. I do have the rest of the GOEV short that I'm going to be using the 50 EMA for. So you can see here there was a quick downward move. It came back up and it used the 50 EMA again as resistance and it came down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that one third size until it makes a trend change based on the 50 EMA and just see how that works out and see how I like it. So you can see down here this is the one third size that I'm currently holding. It's currently up $23 or 2.4% and I'm just going to let it ride and see where it goes. End of the week, starting with a $3,000 account, up $239 and have a 57% win rate. So 57 may not seem that good, but proper risk management and good risk reward calculations going into the trade, good reasons for entering the trade and knowing that you have more upside than risk side, you can still develop a strategy that's profitable even though you only win half the time. Because you could win 70, 80, 90% of the time, but on your one big loser that you have, if you wipe out your entire account, that's not gonna work either. So I think that's going to cover it for this one. If you do have any questions about anything that I talked about in the video, let me know. I could maybe do another video on it or answer it in the next one. I plan to do videos like this with a paper trading account. I'll probably do like a weekly recap for the next month to two months and see how that goes. 
working on developing a strategy, getting better at trading on the long side, and continuing to develop my risk management capability. Next week, I would also like to work on waiting for confirmation or better confirmation before entering a trade. So a few of these trades I entered, it was all based on anticipation of a move that didn't happen yet. So I feel like that's something that I'd like to work on. If, if I'm going to anticipate scaling in with smaller size, maybe a quarter or half size, or waiting for the move to happen and then a confirmation of the move to hold. So like the Apple trade, it broke out, but then it failed. The GOEV trade, it was holding a certain level and then it failed. So both trades, I could have waited for a confirmation of the move and then entered the trade or scaled in when I was anticipating and then added the rest of the size later after the confirmation. So that's my plan for next week. I'll keep you posted.